In this video, Richard Hart, founder of Hex, tell us the truth behind the cryptocurrency crash. Everything you ever wanted to understand, and why Bitcoin dropped 85%. Watch until the end, and let me know what you think in the comments. By the way, subscribe Golden Crypto News Channel to receive more amazing videos like this one. You know, people talk about stocks. I mean, look, Ethereum went up like 16 or 17% today. Yeah. X is up 20% on the week. Why would anyone care about stocks when you've got the gains available in cryptocurrency, the best performing asset class that's ever existed that can put you truly in charge of your money with no middlemen, no counterparty risk? The market participants didn't want to do the normal blow off top with the 85% dump. They believed in the super cycle. And so with leverage, Michael Saylor took on leverage, Three Arrows Capital took on leverage, all these lending companies like uh, Celsius, they also took on leverage. People don't realize it, but loans are leverage. You're doing stuff with money that you don't really have, right? Like you're just delaying the sell. And once the price drops low enough, you have to get liquidated and then that's the real sell. So when you encumber your assets, that's the virtual sell. And when you get liquidated, that's the real sell. And so they bought a double top. It's the first time in Bitcoin's history it's ever done a double top. And now Michael Saylor's at a loss. Michael Saylor, the guy who everyone gave their money to, the opposite of why Bitcoin was invented, they gave their money to Michael Saylor, who maybe can buy Bitcoin with it, maybe not. It's really up to him. It's not like the Bitcoin Investment Trust where they have to buy Bitcoin with it. You can do whatever he wants with the money, I think. Check the docs. It's not a trust company. And by the way, his coin went down 90%. His MicroStrategy Inc. went down 90%. Coinbase's stock went down 90%. Hex, after a 95% dip, is still up a quarter of a million percent mm -hmm. from January 5th of 2020. Uh, this guy, Raul Paul, who was irresponsibly long Ethereum, his words, the largest trade of his life, all his options he bought expired worthless. I told him, ladies, liquors, and leverage is how you get wrecked. That's how smart people go broke. Ladies, liquor, and leverage. Michael Saylor took on leverage. He's down, I believe, 30% on his Bitcoin stack. The government of El Salvador is down. Uh, ARK Invest, down. Everybody's wrecked but me. I what? called the top on the day. I'm a technical analyst and a fundamental analyst. Okay. I'm, I've been in this market since 2011. I've, my price calls are amazing. I make very, very few of them. And that's it's a lot easier to get it right when you, you're not getting chopped up by just noise. So zoom out longer time frame stuff. When hasn't Bitcoin done an 85% drop? It always does. It always has. Why would it stop? Everyone thinks this time is different. Nope. This time's not different. Well, uh, institutional money's here. Yeah, they all got wrecked. As a matter of fact, ARK Invest that bought Coinbase at 250 just dumped most of their holdings at 50 today or, or last night. So that lady got wrecked. Like I just, it's a, I'm surrounded by wrecked fools everywhere that have more followers than me. It just drives me crazy. Bitcoin is directly correlated with the stock market. The stock market is inversely correlated with interest rates. As interest rates rise, stocks go down. As stocks go down, Bitcoin goes down. When Bitcoin goes down, most other cryptocurrencies go down as well. The first time Bitcoin dropped from 65K to 17.5, Hex went up 30X. The second time Bitcoin dropped, Hex went down with it. Now, I think that's because we have some other cyclical things that were going on, and it's just kind of bad timing that they aligned. Mm -hmm. um, because we're, you know, you can't do a 30X when something else drops in price half. That's a 60X right. better performance, unless you're decorrelated. Right. But, you know, now it appears correlated. So it's like, as long as they're raising interest rates, stocks will go down, consumer spending will go down, especially luxury goods. I called the, the Rolex... I've got $10 million of watches. Uh, this is a million dollar Rolex Daytona rainbow. You know, I called the top on the day. So this was a million dollar watch. Still is a million dollar watch, but if you really bargain hunt it, you can get this for 850 right now. There's one for sale for 850. So, you know, the, here's the thing that people don't understand. If the investment that you have drops 20%, but all the stuff that you want to buy drops 20%, you broke even. If the investment that you had went up 20%, but all the stuff you want to buy went up 20%, you broke even. And so it really matters is the ratio of what you're holding versus the stuff that you want to buy. You know, people talk about stocks. I mean, look, Ethereum went up like 16 or 17% today. 
Yeah. X is up 20% on the week. Why would anyone care about stocks when you've got the gains available in cryptocurrency, the best performing asset class that's ever existed that can put you truly in charge of your money with no middlemen, no counterparty risk. Now, a lot of people don't use it that way. They give their keys to someone else, so I beg them not to. So, you know, it, wow. I, whenever people ask me about like, oh, should I mortgage or rent? I'm like, who cares? Crypto, rent, okay. crypto, like, because the you, the bottom will be found. Eventually they will, after they've got, after they've raised rates for long enough, eventually they'll start printing money again. And when they do, all the risk on assets are going to shoot right up and crypto is going to shoot up the hardest. People screw this up all the time in crypto and it drives me wild. They hide. Remember how I said figures don't lie, but liars figure? Here's this misleading garbage that I see from the media and the idiots in the cryptocurrency space constantly. They talk about the drops, okay? Bitcoin dropped 75, Ethereum dropped 85, Hex dropped 95. Cool, great. To any new person, that sounds like a terrible investment. But wait a second, how much are they up? Well, I don't know. When I was mining Bitcoin, they were 50 cents. When I bought Bitcoin, it was $30. Well, now they're $22,000. But what about that 85% drop? Well, you see, let's take a 90% drop. A 90% drop only cancels out a 10x. So if you go up 10x and drop 90%, you're back where you started. Well, Hex went up 10,000x. And so if it drops 90%, it only cancels out 10x. It did a 10,000x. Bitcoin did a 690,000x. Uh, Ethereum did a 14,000x. That's the trick with crypto is if you bought Bitcoin, Bitcoin is now roughly the same price that it was five years ago. So you could have bought Bitcoin for $20,000 in 2017 at the end, which is basically 2018. Or you could buy it for 22 k today. Or if you a week ago, you could have bought it for 20 k So you waited five years for the same price. Same with gold. Gold's the same. Gold's cheaper now than it was 10 years ago. So with gold, you got wrecked. With Bitcoin, you got wrecked if you bought the previous tops on either of those things. But, uh, you know, if you look at a longer time horizon, you can't, why would you care about an 85% dip and not look at it as an opportunity when these things go up thousands, hundreds, tens of X? So like, Yes, Bitcoin has dropped 85% three or four or five times, but it went up 690 million percent. Right. And so people always leave out the how far up, even Dogecoin, right? Dogecoin is bad technology. It's just a meme. It was literally invented as a joke in an afternoon, literally. And you're still up massively compared to Bitcoin. <laughs> even after it dropped 85%. <laughs> You're like, but people are too stupid to zoom out and go back so, and look at the history. I think that 11K and pray is the right way to look at this. Hope that Bitcoin hits 11K and it's just happy to stop there. All right. Because with the dollars getting more expensive and the interest rates slowing and the risk on assets getting beat up, you could get extended performance lower than an 85% drop. You could get a 95% drop. Now, to tell you what that looks like, that's an extra 66% dip. So when you drop from 85 to 95, you would have had 15 left over, but now you've only got five left over. And so you got another 66% dump. So it's, it's an interesting way to look at these drops. So like you could see Bitcoin down at 4K, 5K, sure. You could see Bitcoin at 5K because the dollar is getting more expensive. So I say 11K and pray, but you know, if the stock market gets hard enough, you could go down more. But it all cancels out, right? Because look, yes, yeah. your your crypto went down, but all the stuff you want to buy went down too. So it cancels out a bit, you know? You can only get 13 Ethereum for Bitcoin now, by the way. Um, you used to get 2,000. Okay. Bitcoin, wrecked. So a lot of these uh, large entities in Bitcoin are true scumbags. So for instance, when I told you that like, uh, you know, Grayscale holds 3% of all the Bitcoin, that's the opposite of what Bitcoin is invented. That is a centralized counterparty that can choose to just not pay you. Uh, and then there's a, there's a website that tracks all these like industrial entities that bought big Bitcoin bags and they have 7% of the total. Well, okay. And so like Mt. Gox, Mt. Gox holds 141,000 Bitcoin. 
What's the only thing they can do with them? Sell them or give them to other people that will probably sell them. That's it. Uh, how did they get those? Through fraud. The guy ran a, a fraudulent fractional reserve exchange that got hacked and had huge errors. And then, so he's got 140K. The guy already dumped, he used to have 280. He already dumped half of it. So that guy was dumping back when Bitcoin was 10K. He was helping push the price down to, to 3K in 2018. Mm -hmm. Who else has lots of Bitcoin? Oh, the Bitfinex hacker. He had 70,000 Bitcoin. And now the United States Department of Justice is trying to sell them, apparently, instead of giving them back to Bitfinex where they came from. Because, hey, I don't know. Maybe the DOJ doesn't like crypto. I don't know. Uh, and then who else has a bunch? Ross Ulbricht of the Silk Road fame. Don't even know how many of the government seized from him, but they want to sell his stack too. 